Okay, so hello everyone. Uh, my name is Nessem. Um, I'm in the UK and I'm going to be presenting Frankenstein in Baghdad by Ahmed al Saadawi. So um, this is completely far removed from what I do in my day job. So you saw me answering questions about medical students and exams. So I work as a doctor in England. Um, but yes, I am going to present this novel to you. So what is it? It's a modern magical realist take on Mary Shelley's Frankenstein, updated to take place in post-war US occupied Iraq. Um, so for those of you that are wondering what magical realism is, it's when you have fantasy combined with reality. So in this case, Frankenstein, a monstrous creature in real time Baghdad. Uh, by the way, there are, there are spoilers in this just in case you want to read this um, in the future. So um, yeah, just be aware. Um, the novel was originally published in March 2013 in Arabic. It won the Arabic Fiction Prize in 2014 and an International Booker Prize nomination in 2018. Uh, the novel was a hit in Iraq to the point that it was sold out and the author had to make an electronic copy available for those who could not get their hands on it. And interestingly, it is apparently going to be made into a film uh, by a UK-based company. And uh, remember where you heard that first, uh, via... Africa. The author is Ahmed al Saadawi. He was born in 1973. He's an Iraqi novelist, poet, and screenwriter, as well as documentary maker, and he works in Baghdad. Um, interestingly, uh, part of the prize for the International Arabic Literature Prize is uh, having the novel translated into English, as well as a $50,000 grant. So, without that, we wouldn't be speaking about it today. And that leads me on to mention the um, translator, uh, Jonathan Wright. He is a British journalist and translator who studied Arabic, Turkish and Islamic civilization at St. John's College, Oxford. Um, he's been based in the Middle East for the last three decades. And interestingly, the story about him I found quite interesting. In the, during the Lebanese civil war, he was held hostage and managed to escape through a hole um, and went to the Beirut-Damascus highway where he was picked up and taken to a, a Reuters office in Beirut. And there's a short uh, clipping there about his story. Um, so I will explain the story now. Um, the main story centers around uh, this character here, uh, Hadi al-Attaq in, in Arabic, or Hadi the junk de dealer. Um, so he sees this chaos and destruction around him. Uh, he's concerned that there are body parts from all the explosions strewn around Baghdad streets and he feels really bad that these people don't have um, are not dignified they don't have dignified burials so his aim is to put all these body parts together to create this corpse or the Frankenstein um, and one day this Frankenstein his creation just disappears and you start to hear about these murders happening in, in Baghdad and it's attributed to this creation. This is interestingly from um, the Robert De Niro film, Frankenstein. And, the, and that film is alluded to in the novel as well. And I have the author here, who's going to explain a little bit about the main premise of the story. Can you hear it all? Yes. 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 كائن غريب داخل بغداد في فترة محددة هي شتاء 2005 وهي الفترة التي شهدت بدايات يعني ازدياد العنف داخل بغداد يقوم هذه العتاق وبائع عاديات في بغداد بجمع أجزاء من ضحايا التفجيرات ويخلق منها هذا الكائن الذي يبدو أن مهمته كانت هي الانتقام للضحايا الذين يتكون منها. Okay, so that's the author talking about his. Um... How do I get out? Of... Okay, yeah, the author talking about the main premise. There are some sub themes which I will briefly mention as well. And I think they are just as important um, within the novel. Interestingly, the novel is has an ensemble cast. So there isn't one character that takes precedence over another. There's lots of different ones and they reflect different aspects of uh, current Iraqi society. Obviously, the biggest theme is that of war and what happens in the aftermath of a war. Death, 
death is something we face every day and in this situation in this context even more um there's a saying that that says that death is never more than an arm arm's length away from you um, and this novel highlights that even more so you can see the themes are quite dark they're not your it's not a fairy story um the the novel is centered in betawin which is a rundown neighborhood in old baghdad um and interestingly it formerly housed um the jewish and uh, Christian communities in Iraq, and sorry, in Baghdad, and it goes into the decimation of these communities. So, how we preserve the communities in the in the societal form, as well as their architecture, um, and what remains, um, which I've alluded to there, emigration and loss. The Iran Iraq, Iraq War is there in the background as well. Philosophical themes like justice. What does it mean to be a criminal? This is a big question there. What does it mean to be innocent? Indeed, there are uh, innocent elements within criminals and criminality within innocence. Uh, journalism, one character is a journalist. Um, the down and outs of Iraqi society. This is the underbelly of, of Iraqi Baghdadi society we're talking about, uh, which is interesting from a diaspora point of view, because I think we are, put, we are showing the positive aspects and we don't really talk about the darker aspects. Middle Eastern coffee house culture and storytelling is a big theme here. Um, the Hadi al Attaq character goes to this coffee house and tells these stories. And they're so fantastical and imaginative that you start to doubt whether they're real. And there's, there's these characters that you see and everyone, every Arab knows these kind of characters. Um, but the, the coffee house culture, as you can see here, is, is quite a big theme, both in, in the Arab countries and in this novel. Creation, what does it mean to create this monster? What does it mean to be a creator um, and have this your creation run loose around the city? And divination and government ministries. So there's a tracking and pursuit ministry and they have these astrologers and fortune tellers who try to search for the monster. Um, so I thought that was interesting. Um, this is basically just summarizing. So, like I said, why is this important as a novel? Because it's written from an Iraqi perspective. We are we hear the American perspective quite often, and we need to know that the war is still ongoing. Um, and there's an interesting point there on the English translation. So, um, in English, you say about 20% more than you, you do in Arabic. Um, and I think the, the translator has done a good job in uh, staying faithful to the Arabic text. In their translation. Um, I'm going to summarize or conclude on what I think is the most pivotal um, quote within the book and uh, I'll, I'll do it in the voice that I hear, uh, Frankenstein's voice that I hear, the Frankenstein of Baghdad. I am made up of body parts of people from diverse backgrounds, ethnicities, tribes, races and social classes. I represent the impossible mix that never was achieved in the past. I am the first true Iraqi citizen. So that is Frankenstein Baghdad, chapter 10, section two, page 153. So here we see that the monster, this creation, has managed to achieve what Iraqi society has not been able to achieve within the last couple of decades. These body parts of different aspects of Iraqi uh, society have come together um, and tried to maintain justice in a way that no other Iraqi citizen has done before. If you found that interesting and you'd like to look further into this topic, um, I've um, put some links there, a couple of articles from the New York, New York Times and The Guardian. There's this video here on YouTube, which is um, a, a talk with the author and the translator. Um, and these are other novels who've, which have won the Arabic Prize for Literature. Uh, in the past few years, another Iraqi author, Shahad al-Rawi, and a Kuwaiti author. And the bamboo stalk was actually made into a Kuwaiti TV series, uh, Saq al-Bamboo, which you might have heard of. So, that's me, Nesam al-Ali. Thank you very much for listening. <laughs> Ya Baba,